Hello and welcome everyone. It's time for another legacy video. Let me start by saying that I just in the past weekend top aided another ELM qualifier. Unfortunately, third time was not a charm because I didn't make it to the finals and I didn't win. So um, unfortunately, even though I got three top eights in ELM qualifiers, I was not able to qualify for the European Legacy Masters Tournament, which is basically the European Championship of Legacy, right? Uh, but we did go top eight three times, which is uh, pretty nice. Um, now, I do want to point out that the list that I was playing at the ELM qualifier is not the list that I'm playing today. Uh, the list that I played at the ELM, at the ELM qualifier was a um, band list, but I decided to go back to the Brewing Chamber because I've been hearing a lot of talk about people being worried that Bowmasters would be the end of Infect. And in fact, currently, I always doubted that statement. And after playing around a bit with new lists, actually, I think that Bowmasters might be very good for us. Simple reason being that if you know how to play around Bowmasters and you can adjust your deck, it doesn't really do a whole lot. Like pinging for one is something that Infect has always been very good at dealing with. So let's dive into the list, uh, to what some changes that I've done. And uh, this was a very much theory crafted build um, that went surprising well. Uh, let me start by saying that without spoiling any of the matches. Before we dive in though, I want to thank Card Hoarder because great news, I am now sponsored by Card Hoarder. Really, really proud to be sponsored by them. And in fact, this is the first video that I was able to make because of them because I borrowed a lot of cards that I otherwise would not, not have bought. So um, you can expect me to try a lot more uh, interesting builds in the future. So thank you very much, Card Hoarder. Check them out if you're interested in loading cards, and let's dive into this build, shall we? So, let's go to the pound spells first. Four Invigorate, two Berserk, and then you can see I've gone back to blue-green. I'm not playing white anymore. Uh, I'm not sure if we really want to play white again because swords, you know, swords are always very good. Because, but if your if your creature the opponents are playing like bow masters is not a creature that's actually going to make you lose the game very quickly, right? If they are going to be attacking with one ones. Um, they will not be able to kill you very fast. So I didn't know if Swords was going to be worth it still. Um, and for that reason, I decided to maybe it's time to try Blue-Green again. So, well, no, no Skrelv, of course, if you're not playing White. So I've gone back to Vines of Arstwood. That's pretty straightforward. And if you look at this build, I'm only playing one Scale Up, and then another addition is one Snakeskin Veil. For people who've watched my modern content, they know that I love Snakeskin Veil. Snakeskin Veil protects our creature, gives it hexproof, but, and this is very important, it also gives our creature a plus one plus one crown, uh, counter. Um, the counter sticks, right? So if your opponent has another Bowmasters later, um, our creature is now a 2-2, so that means Bowmaster can no longer kill it, which is very relevant. Also, black returning means Plague Engineer returns, so Snakeskin, very good there. Uh, thinking about playing more, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to squeeze in even more. Um, but I should know that if you look at the lands, I'm playing 22 lands in this list. Uh, and this is why I wanted to try something very experimental. Four wastelands. Um, I expected them to be pretty medium, but they were pretty good, honestly. Mostly because people don't expect in fact to be playing four wastelands, as they shouldn't. The idea behind this is that um, Delver is playing Grixis again. Um, I've been seeing Control is going to four colors, so greedy mana bases and Wasteland punishes greedy mana bases, especially when your players don't play around them and people don't play around four Wastelands. You're not even one anymore when you're playing Infect, so they were quite nice. One thing I want to note is that moving forward, I will probably start cutting Ponders again. I don't think that Ponder is really that good anymore in the current meta. In fact, I've always played usually one, two, maybe three Ponders in the past. Only recently have I gone up to four Ponders. Um, but with Bowmasters being so prevalent, I think it might be correct to drop a few of, the, few of them again. Uh, probably going to go down to one Ponder, maybe leave it at two. So I like in the crop rotation again, especially crop rotation into Pendlehaven when your opponent goes Bowmasters is really good uh, because they've basically done nothing and probably tapped out. Let's go to the sideboard, right? Sideboard, when you're playing blue-green, not a lot of choices, so Fluster Storm, that's straightforward against combo. Then we have the Hydroblast. It's really nice to play Hydroblast when you have a lot of Moonstompy decks, good against Delver too, so a lot of uses. Two Surgical, that's straightforward against reanimated decks. Force of Vigors, also straightforward. Destroy the artifacts and enchantments. Vader Summer, this is so good in the meta right now, honestly. I think I don't understand why this card does not see more play. If you're playing green, you should be playing Vela Summer. You will see in the games coming up that Vela Summer was really powerful. Um, and then we have Shaper Sanctuary. 
Again, people who know my modern content know I love this card. I'm um, not sure if I'm going to keep this one. Spot removal is um, not as prevalent in Legacy as it is in Modern. Also, when you draw a card when your opponent has Blow Masters, um, they can ping it again. However, you get to draw as much cards as you want so you can set up. It was okay. Nothing more. Um, and then, something that I really like when you're playing Infect is Meekstone. I've played this in the past. People don't know what this is. Um, creatures with power 3 or greater don't untap during their controllers and tap steps. Which means all of our creatures untap, but probably most creatures of the opponents never untap again, especially against Delver. The only thing that's going to untap usually is Bowmasters, uh, assuming that the um, the army has grown. So that's really good. And then I'm also playing Snaring Bridge, which is hilarious because if you drop this late against Delver, you can't lose. Um, very often they board out Brazen Borrower. Sometimes they have one, but if they have one Brazen Borrower, good luck finding that. And we if, uh, we, if we have our one ones, we can still attack. So this is pretty damn funny. All right, let's dive into the game, shall we? Because I did have a lot of fun this league. Let's hop in. So for the first game here, what you can see is immediately that we are um, unfortunately lacking a land because this hand was the nuts. What I do enjoy about this list is that we are playing more pump spells. So um, we get to kill rather quickly, which is always interesting, especially with bow masters. You know, the reason why I think bow masters isn't that big of a deal for Infect is that it's for our deck specifically bow masters is like an, an overcost of the fatal push right destroy one threat uh and pay mana to do so <laughs> so it's really not that big of a deal um but of course can't keep that one put in mulligans to six as well so that that's pretty good i'm gonna keep here because i don't want mulligan to five ah, it's difficult for us we require a set of cards to win the game but we do draw another threat so i'm i'm not not unhappy with this especially with pendlehaven being like a semi semi pump spell as well um, so the idea here is that hopefully you are playing against some kind of a fair deck. What we can just do is we can drop threat after threat after threat and kill them that way. Now what we do see here is that our opponent is actually um, brainstorming and not finding another land, which is excellent for us. So I'm assuming here, since they start off an island, that I'm playing against a control deck. What you want to do against a control deck is you want to fire through as much pump damage, as much infect damage as quickly as possible. So I kept the Wasteland because I knew that my opponent missed a land drop. Um, however, with my opponent not finding another land, I felt that I probably wouldn't need a Wasteland anymore. I didn't want them to know that I'm playing Wasteland so they wouldn't play around it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to present some threats. If they encounter this one, I probably just win already. Keep in mind I have Crop Rotation and Snakeskin and Pendlehaven, so they're going to be dead fairly easily. Uh, and they just failed to find another land again, so we just killed them. You know, my opponent didn't didn't have a lot of going on here, so that was pretty straightforward for me. Uh, let's go to the next game. Okay, so sideboarding, I was expecting to be playing as some kind of a control deck. However, I didn't really see all that much, and it's possible that it was a combo deck that just was flooding a bit, or they just had a bit of an, uh, a fail going on. So I, I kept the signboard rather light to ensure that the deck really functions. So if I'm playing against Control, don't really like Berserks, and I cut one Wasteland, I expected my opponent not to play around Wasteland because they hadn't seen one game one, which is why I didn't expose it. Um, so I just uh, also cut one day. So I brought in the Fluster Storms. I think that's really nice. Um, but that's probably the most important one. You know, the Fluster Storms are really, really good. Let's see what happened. So opening hand here, very good indeed, has everything you want, and mulligans to five again, which is very weird if they are playing control deck. Um, it's, it's, it's rare that this happens, that your opponent just is uh, lacking a good opening hands a bit, but I guess I can't complain. So play Noble, they play Flames, so at this point I'm probably thinking that I was correct. Uh, so I'm just going to present threats. You know, I want them, they swords here. I'm going to let that one happen. I have more than enough threats in my hand. The only thing I'm really afraid of here is like uh, the mass removal spell. But I figure that if they have Supreme Verdict, so be it, right? I can't play around everything. And if they don't have it, I think I'm just well set up to, to win the game. Even if they do go for Supreme Verdict here, I have so many um, cantrips that I'm able to squeeze around. And I'll just squeeze out a win here. They have the Supreme Verdict. However, they have gone down to two cars right now, so tough for me, unfortunate, but I'm going to ponder, hope to draw a land here, which we do. Put Elf on top, probably don't want the other land here, probably going to shuffle that one away. So not do anything here, I want to keep up this force plus Vader Center. There we go, so play the Elf, 
Keep in mind, I have a land on top. So I'm just going to chill. No need to go to ham here. Dogmatic Fister. Go to the end step. And here they're going to play Dress Down. So I do want to note here that with my opponent playing Dress Down here, uh, there's an interesting spot here because Dress Down makes it so my Glistener Elf did lose Infect indeed. But with with the timing of my opponent, what I can actually do is I can animate Ink Moth Nexus. And if I do that, my Ink Moth Nexus will get Infect again. So I'm going to Brainstorm. They're going to Pyroblast. That's okay. And you can see me not going to animate a Nexus here. I'm just going to, again, I'm just going to chill. No need to overextend. I put in Brainstorms. That's okay. I want to play it safe, play it cool. That's how I usually play. Now here we go. Narset. I can't have that one. So Force. I was expecting them to counter. They didn't. Snakeskin and they Double Sword. So for them, Mulliganing, this was quite a good hand indeed. They, their hand was quite packed. Now, okay, we've already seen three swords um, and Supreme Verdict. So especially with me having seen three swords already, I figure that chance on them having the fourth one in the hand is very low. So if I find pump spells, I'm just going to go for it immediately. I mean, statistically, there's not going to be a uh, better time for me to do so. Wasn't expecting days to be relevant, but here we are. They fourth Erlingist me. Let me just pop that card on screen because maybe some people don't know what that card does. Fourth Erlinger says you can create X2-2 red human knights with trample and haste. And if they deal damage, one or more of your creatures deals damage, you become the monarch. I decided to counter this. I could have also just let it resolve and take the monarch with Inkmon Nexus. But I think against the control deck, you really don't want them to have the advantage. Also, since I, or I still had Velasum and Vines, I figure it's best for me to just counter this. Um, I don't think Veil is going to be that good in the long run, so what I wanted to do here is I wanted to um, just draw a card, you know, I can't imagine them, they only had one card in hand, so them having another force will, I would have used it, that would have been you know, bad for them, so I'm just going to, in this case, start slamming in, being very safe with the vines, it's a protection spell, they use dress down, that's dress down number two. Usually dress down is a two of or a three of, so important to note that probably don't have to play around that card anymore. Brainstorm plateau, and here we're gonna see four mana ruination. And let me just pause right here. What I did is um so with ruination on the stack, I fetched, I went to get that basic forest, so that's very relevant. And even though they can pay for this days, I want a days so I can pick up my tropical island because in the late game, days is not going to get any better. So I figure that it's better for me to just pick up the the land because now what they're going to do is they're just going to kill um, Ink Moth Nexus and one tropical island. But that's okay. I really didn't need the tropical anymore. Um, Ingmar Nexus was unfortunate, but I still had a um, Bladder Agent with them having one card in hand. I feel like this is fine. So they ending Bladder Agents. We can't have that. I'm going to save it. And I feel like right now I'm kind of in a driver's seat. They've seen so many removal spells already that uh, they will have to start drawing blanks at a certain point. So I'm, I am just going to Pendlehaven. Reason for me using the Pendlehaven on the Nexus is that um, it plays around swords better. Small detail, but it can be relevant. So attack first, then Pendlehaven. Fake that I have some kind of a protection spell. I play this and Ralph. They're going to hard cast force, but um, they are at 9 infect, and um, I have two threats, so there's no way how I can lose, unless they had drawn the third dress down, but they didn't. Nice, let's go to round two. Round two opening hand, I'm on the plane, so this hand is perfect, has everything you want. So I'm going to keep here, I'm going to fire off that ponder, let's see what we find. Definitely want to keep that daze. Sure, I already have one, but I don't mind having daze, and the option to force will. Ancient Tomb, yikes, best card in Legacy right now. But they don't have a turn one play, so then I'm happy. We have Urza Saga, that's going to be too slow against my hand, so I'm okay with that. I knew about the Blood Agent on top, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to animate, slam it with the Nexus, and I'm going to be having a very Delver-esque game plan, where I'm just going to protect my threats and kill them fairly quickly, especially with the Vines. So here, since they don't have Colored Mana yet, it's safe for me to just drop down Blood Agent, 
And at this point, I'm not sure what I'm up against still. I was expecting some kind of maybe painter, some kind of deck like that. Uh, we have Sagas here, Mox, Opal, Lotus, Petal. It, and then we see the Duress. So I figured that, okay, we are playing against Black Saga Storm. But unfortunately, I didn't have... Uh, well, with them having the Duress, I just kind of lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, can't say anything else, really. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Let's go to the next one. I think our matchup against Saga Storm is pretty good. What you want to do is, of course, you bring in the Force of Figures and you bring in the Fluster Storms. That's the most important thing. Against Storm, you take out your slow stuff, which is Ink Moth Nexus. When you're playing Crop Rotation, you leave in one Ink Moth Nexus because um, that's an extra threat. You cut Vines, it's too slow, and Snake Skin is also too slow. There you go, straightforward. Vader Summer, of course, definitely has to come in. That's really good. Okay, here we have a Wasteland. I'm going to play a Threat Turn 1. Always good. So, with my opponents not knowing that I'm playing Wastelands, especially not four of them, I should be able to juke them. Getting rid of Buzz Saga with Wasteland is excellent. The really good combination here is we have Wasteland and we have Noble, so I'm just going to be able to get rid of the Saga, then play the Noble. Okay, I'm not sure if four Wasteland is worth it. Um, I wanted to test it out, and it, it was okay, but maybe I want more pump spells. Um, I'll do some more brewing. Vault of Whispers here, Chromox, sure. So this petal. I'm very afraid of me just dying here. But they play Wish Claw, that's okay, because it's a bit slow. And if they pass it to me, I mean, sure. So, Ponder, plus the Storm, is what I take, of course. And I'm just going to slam in. Put him to two. Any pump spell I draw now is lethal. They can ball therapy me here. And I let them do so, because there's no way that they're going to be naming Flusterstorm. I was expecting them to name Force, so them having the days is unfortunate, but so be it. So I fetched away, caught on top, didn't want that one, but I drew another threat, which was quite bad here. I didn't play Glistener off, um, didn't think I needed it, and I wanted to have as much mana available as I could. But here they fatal pushed me, so I felt kind of bad to uh, not, <laughs> not have played more threats. With them at Fatal Push, I just played Agent and Elf. And it's clear that Flusterstorm here just made me win the game. They couldn't go off, and that's why they didn't. Game 3. So look at this opening hand here. Quite awkward. I really want to keep, but I'm keeping this purely based off of Force of Vigor. That's just... That, I mean, it's risky, but Force of Vigor is so good in the matchup that I just decided that, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it. And here, they thought sees me, I just force a bigger, get rid of that Mox Opal immediately, and now I'm empty, empty, well, I have lands, but I don't have anything going on in my hand. But I'm not unhappy. Usually, if you're able to get rid of a few artifacts, the deck just doesn't function without them, right? So, it was a risky keep, there's no denying that, but uh, I, was, I was brewing around a bit here, so... And it just shows you that it's working out. Here, they duress me, but I drew Vader Summer, excellent. But I drew another land, which is quite bad, so... <laughs> Gonna play the Wasteland because they know about it. So, picking up days, that's quite good. And you can just see how good it was for me getting rid of the Mox Opal because they are not functioning at all. They don't have enough mana. So, I found Ponder. I shuffled. Bad cards. Drew another Wasteland. That was bad too, but so be it. Bit land heavy here. But I do find my Blood Agent, so that's okay. I have a threat. They have Fatal Push. I do decide to daze. Because I feel like with them not doing anything, it's, this is now a race. So they Cabal Therapy me, I only have land, so that's fine. Best top deck here is, of course, Brainstorm, which we do find. There we go. I'm going to keep that Force Will. Also keeping the Wastelands, because you never know. No. Response to them using the City. I will Wasteland it away. And this Vader Summer is going to be very good. Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual. I don't want them to have uh, the Tendrils, uh, sorry, the Ad Nauseum, which they do. That's unfortunate. I really wish that they would have some kind of way to go for it, and then I could just fade us some and say no. Um, but here we go. They are playing the Ad Nauseum to actually kill me this turn, so they're going to draw a bunch of cards, going to go down to a very low life. And, um, you know, at this stage of the game, if they are going to go too low, I might just uh, use a Pump Spell and kill them with a Noble. So they're going to go for Duress and then try and kill me. However, with me having played Veil of Summer, it just destroys the Storm count. <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, this is going to be very awkward for them because they've used up everything and I draw the scale of Berserk and kill them. Nice. Thank you very much, Vitz. I'm a sideboard card is really doing the works here. I uh, was able to pause the vigor and was able to veil a summer. So, boom. Nice. Next round. So we're on the draw here. I do see Garuda. Card you don't see all that much anymore. Um, but otherwise, this hand is pretty damn good. It has a threat. It has force. It has a pump spell. So I'm quite happy. I'm going to see a Swamp here, and I draw Days. Perfect. Everything I wanted. If I hadn't drawn Days, I probably would have started with uh, Noble, but now I'm feeling pretty safe. However, they actually have Cavern of Souls into Orc. Shit. <laughs> this sucks to be me. <laughs> that really hurt. Now, we do find Blood Agent. That's nice. Um, and this is going to be a matchup where I can just show you how Orc really isn't all that big of a deal. Um, unfortunately, they have another one. So... It feels bad not having played Noble here, but um, I can't. Well, I, I can't play around everything. Um, they have Khan. I'm going to force Pitch Days because they have so much mana that they can just pay for it. And I know that if I find one pump spell here, we should be good. So it shows you that a lot of decks right now are just going all in on the Bowmasters, and I just don't think that that's a winning strategy. Um, and I think this is one of those decks that just shows you why. Um, if you if you play around the Orcish Bowmasters or you have a deck that really doesn't care about it, um, it's really not that big of a deal. And in fact, can be a deck that really doesn't care about Bowmasters all that much because we don't need that many ponders um, as we as we as other decks do because a lot of decks they just always want four. That has never been the case for Infect. And this was a game where you saw that um, if we play enough pump spells, we can just win through um, what our opponent is going to try and do, because take a look quicker, look at this game and what we beat. Um, two Bowmasters, Khan the Great Creator, and Channels of the Void. That's a hand that you would always keep against Infect, but we just rammed through it. Um, so the deck has... Uh, I'm just saying that Infect is not dead. Let me, let me start by saying that. So against this mono black helm deck with Bowmasters, what you want to do is, of course, Balls of Vigor, Excellent, and Vela Summer. Again, Vela Summer, expect to see it a lot in my new lists. I think it's going to be very good indeed. My new model list that's coming up soon is also playing a lot of Vela Summer, so I want to do uh, I do wanted to point that out. Didn't bring in Shape of Sanctuary all that much, so that's pro probably not going to be a, a mainstay in the sideboard. Um, but we'll see where we end up. Okay, so perfect hand here, also will. I'm well probably going to be happy using that turn one if they have some kind of fast way into chalice but they do not so then i'm very happy to be able to play noble if they get rid of noble with bowmasters that's okay which they do not even gonna fight over this and now you can see me draw agents drawing another one is really nice um because now i can if they want to destroy this agent i can just let them depending on what they play and here we can see shieldred and i'm just going to let shieldred resolve because Shieldred is too slow against me. I already have Invigorate. If I draw one land here, I'm going to put them at 9 Infect. And I can just attack the turn afterwards with Force Will Pack Up. And I can also Brainstorm for the land. And here, here we go. So I have Tropical Island. What will you do in this situation? Very, very interesting indeed here. So what I'm going to do is, after thinking for some while, I'm actually going to ponder first. I'm just going to show you how we can play around Bowmasters, and it doesn't really affect our deck all that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ponder. They, of course, are going to Bowmasters, and they're going to ping the Bladder Agents. So I lose life. Bowmasters don't care. In response, I'm going to invigorate the Bladder Agent and play Noble. Slam in. What did Bowmasters do? They, they have gotten one big army token, which I didn't really care about, and I'm still going to be able to kill them. So... Just to show you that Bowmasters, once you get to hang up playing around it, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, so, slam in, vines, force the will back up, boom, kill him dead. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, round number four. Should note that it's clear that we are playing a list that plays a lot more protection spells, which is something that you should be doing if you want to play Infect right now, but we, we can manage, we can manage as you can see. Cool! Turn one threat, and we have Wasteland. Let's see if we can play the Del Delver game plan. I'm on the draw, that's unfortunate, but uh, so be it. I guess I can't complain about anything else. Uh, wish there was a force in here or a daze, but okay. Another Swamp. So expect to be seeing a lot of 
black based decks, especially in leagues. Drawing Force Will, really nice. I'm going to keep here. We have Dark Ritual. Can't have that. I do want to have another turn. We have Urborg into Shadow Spear. So, okay. That makes Wasteland really good. Boom. So, we, you saw how good Wasteland was, right? It had its uses quite a lot, especially with people doing, not playing around it. Uh, so, I'm going to Brainstorm here. Not the best Brainstorm, but I do find Days and Force Will. So, again, you can see how I'm playing more of a more of, more of a Delver-esque um, game plan here with uh, with um, the Wastelands. It makes that we can just play a Threat, protect it, and one or two Pump Spells is good enough. So here we can actually daze the one ring. That's nice. Why? Because we wasteland it. So yeah, thank you very much, wasteland. Because if if that one ring would have resolved, we would have been in trouble. So I know we just win regardless because I'm going to be able to put them to nine infects. They are going to be making one block next turn, but then they have two other ones being able to slam in for one. So we win. Nice. Next one. So many black based controlish decks. So, same thing as last time. Force of Vigor, Veil of Summer, easy peasy. You want that. Cool. Let's look at the opening hand here. Uh, I have a threat. I have Veil of Summer. I have two pump spells and vines. You can see how much I always have the pump spells because I increased the pump spell count. And we are playing vines again, so that does make sense. So, fairly happy here. I'm going to be playing turn one into Noble. So, look at this. Bowmasters. I just paused here because um, take a minute to see at what you would do with this in this situation. So with them having played the Bowmasters, um, since I already have Lethal, I already have Invigorate, Invigorate and Vines. In this very specific spot, I actually wanted to save my Noble. And the reason for that is that next turn, uh, I can play the Wasteland, even though they didn't have lands, it's fine. I can play Bladder Agent, right? And I still have green up. So the idea was, what I was expecting them to do is probably they'll have some another kind of black-based removal spell. And then I can Veil the Summer and I still have Invigorate and Vines left to kill them on the swing back. That's how I wanted to set this up, right? So let's see what happens here. Bowmasters, my Invigorate resolves. Did you keep a Bowmasters count, by the way? Have you seen how many times I've seen that card and how much... Uh, how much of the instances I actually just won through it. And here you can see Veil of Summer being really good again. Just saying Bowmasters, don't care. Already have lethal, so I'm just going to invigorate, finds, and say, sure. Turn two Bowmasters, turn three Bowmasters. I don't care, I'm going to win through them. Nice. Last round. Okay, so they reveal you're in here. 80 card deck. My hand is perfectly fine. I have turn one elf. Noble, I have Ink Moth Nexus. I'm on the draw, unfortunately, otherwise this hand would have been very good, but otherwise it's really, really fine. Also draw Snakeskin Veil, excellent. If I am playing against a Bowmasters Dex, uh, Dex deck, I really do like that. So, let's see what we're up against. Underground Sea, so I expect Bowmasters. There we go. Again, here I'm considering what to do. Should I or should I not daze? I decide not to. Uh, here I'm going to play the Nexus, play Noble, because I already have a threat, so I was really not afraid of the Bowmasters. The only thing I really did, didn't want to see is Wasteland. They have another Bowmasters, and here I do decide to fight over it, because I think I'm going to need Noble. I want to have, if I have one more pump spell, I can just kill them, so I'm just going to slam in here. And I feel that, like we should be good. If I just attack two, three times, we should be good. I'm going to Snakeskin Veil here too, because I'm going to be now be slamming in for three Infect each turn, which is a lot. And I still have Vines of Protection. So again, Bowmasters, it's not going to be, Bowmasters is not fast enough to kill me. I don't care. And the good thing about Ink Moth Nexus too is that we can even just in the end step brainstorm and they can't target Ink Moth Nexus. So another reason why you want to play Crop Rotation. So I just slam in here, they didn't do anything. And here, after I fetch, they actually Sauron's Ransom. I'm going to put the cards like this, and they put Days and Ponder into the graveyard. So what they do is, they take the Wasteland. The reason for me putting the cards this way is, either they have the Wasteland, or either they have the removal spell for Bladder Agent. That was the idea. Um, so now they are able to Wasteland me. Only thing I really didn't want to see is another removal spell or another Bowmasters. They take Yorin in the hand, that's okay. Not the best draw here, and I'm going to try and kill them, because I have the days for a potential Fatal Push. Now, they do have Force Negation, 
<laughs> That's unfortunate. But I have one more turn, so if they don't draw a removal spell, we should be good. However, they have Ransom. I know that there's there's not a single situation where I'm able to prevent them from having a um, a a, uh, a removal spell. So I put them in such a way that they were going to take the Bowmasters because I was hoping that the way I set it up that they would only have two mana up so they would Bowmasters and my days would be live. But unfortunately, even though I think I played really well, they had another Force Negation, right? So I put the Sword on the Ransom in both situations in um, such a way that they had to play into my game plan, and them having double force on negation, so be it. Uh, well, was nothing I could do about it, but I do think we've set it up uh, excellently. Right, next game. So it's clear we are playing against a blue-black base control deck. So, I want to draw my cards, so I brought in the Shapers, uh, brought in Fluster Storms, those are really good, and Great Sable Stag are going to be great as well, or Uro. So I have a lot of situations here where I, my sideboard cards will be able to carry me, especially the Great Sable Stag would be so great. Because again, it just reads, you win the game. So this hand's interesting. Um, really want this to be a tropical island. But um, apart from me not having blue mana, it's it's quite a good hand. So I do decide to keep, especially with me having Ink Moth Nexus and Vela Summer. I could have not played the Shapers and keep Vela Summer up. But I really want to drop down Shapers uh, turn one. They do have Thought Seas, that's unfortunate. Um, so we could be in trouble. I think Thoughts is the only card that I really didn't want to see, but so be it. So they play Grave, Ponder. So I didn't see any Watery Graves turn one, nor did I see any uh, Fast um, Death Shadows and stuff like that. So I wasn't I wasn't thinking of playing against Death Shadow. Um, so I probably would have sideboarded a bit differently, would have brought in the Meek Stones or Ensnaring Ridges. They also have uh, Days alongside the wasteland so that's really unfortunate uh, and i i need to find tropical here or we just lose but um keeping that opening hand might come back to haunt me but i would have i would have played it the same way regardless so let's see what they have left i play elf let's see if they have more removal spells kind of hoping that they would go for um bow masters here because then i get to draw and invigorate fortunately they have snuff out Powder Keg is something I don't care about at all. Let's let's overrule the card. What this says is that if you have your upkeep, you may put a counter on it. If you sack it, you may destroy each artifact and creature with the mana value equal to the number of fused counters on that card. So what I think is going to happen is they're going to want to kill Shaper Sanctuary as quickly as possible. So I do just drop down Noble because I, will, I have another one, right? So I don't really care if they do this. If I get to untap, even better. A bit surprised by Death Play, because that means that um, they are going to destroy their own Death Shadow here, which is weird. Um, and I'm pretty close to killing them with regular damage at this situation. So what I really wanted to find here was Great Sable Stag, because if I had found Great Sable Stag, game. So I'm going to Invigorate here. They're going to Fatal Push, which means I get to draw. I'm going to Vines, protect my Noble, and I'm going to be able to kill Death Shadow. So you see how good Shapers is. My draws haven't been great, but okay, we should be good. I expect them to use the Powder Keg fairly quickly here. They're going to reanimate Death Shadow. We can't have that. We just don't want them to have threats. So I'm going to first Daze, then Fluster Storm. There we go. If I would have drawn my Meek Stone or stuff like that, that also would have been good. I'm going to brainstorm now since they can't flash in Bowmasters. Really bad brainstorm. Just three lands. Yikes, that sucks. Okay, nothing I can do about it. Was really digging for my two great table stags or Uros. Any one of those at this point would probably be game for me. Boom, Shildrick's Edict. So I'm going to sacrifice the Noble. Shuffle away the bad cards. Better Summer. It's okay. I'm going to Wasteland. Stuff away right now. Again, I think the longer this game goes on, the more favoured I really am with me having the um, Bureau and Great Sable Stag. Statistically, it should be... So, Wasteland Crop Rotate. You can see them thinking about whether or not they should counter. They didn't, which kind of sucks. <laughs> because that Vader Summer would have been excellent. Draw another land. 
bad draw, but okay, let's just play it. You should be sideboarding, or at least adjusting your sideboarding to meet Death Shadow. Play Thoughtseize, I Veil of Summer. Excellent. So I've seen quite a lot of my deck already. You know, 24 cards, 25 right now, but still none of my, my big beaters. I want to find Uro, or I want to find Great Sable Stag. So I'm not going to be able to shuffle this one here. I do have Threats, which is something that I do want. So I was debating on should I shuffle in hopes of me finding one of my big beaters, but I mean, nothing you can very easily do. I have another Brainstorm, so I've gone through half of my deck right now. So I'm like, what are the odds of me not finding uh, Great Sable Stag or Uro? Well, turns out they were there. <laughs> okay, they force. Sucks, but so be it. Gonna be slamming in. I have days, which is awkward. So I knew about that invigorate. I'm going to keep it. I want to make Death Shadow a bit smaller, and I want to try and kill them with regular damage because if I if they attack me next turn, I don't have any way to drop the life totals so too low. I could still win, but they actually drew snuff out, so that was the perfect addition to their deck. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and play it out and see if they uh, maybe they fall for it, but we just uh, we just lose here. So not finding Great Sable Stag here, unfortunately, that would have been the best draw because that would just mean attack and kill. But they have Plague Engineer. I can daze, so okay, buying me some time. I'm not conceding because again, if I draw Great Sable Stag, we win. So I'm gonna block. Invigorate, making gains in life, put counters on. I draw another land. Sucks to be me. <laughs> they ponder. And they find Strix. And that's that's game because even if I draw Great Stable Lag now, I'm still dead, unfortunately. But even then, wasn't there. Okay, what can I say? Um uh, felt quite or um un well a little bit awkward here, game three. Um but can't complain. I think my list is very good. Um, so looking back on this, if I will, if I can go back to my list, I was happy with more well, probably everything that I that was like trying out. Maybe four wastelands is too much, but when we saw one, I was happy with it. Even though I had to get rid of a couple of them, maybe I should definitely happy with the fewer amount of ponders. Didn't miss them at all. Uh, maybe play two snakeskin veils. I like that. As soon as it comes on Magic Online, I probably want to have some number of Embiggens in here, so I could see myself cutting maybe two Wastelands, one Ponder, playing um, two Embiggens, one Snakeskin. I like that, having one Wasteland. Uh, I don't know, I, I will have to try some stuff out, but I really didn't miss White right now, and I think that's mainly because Meekstone and the Snowy Bridges do some work. Um, not sure about the shapers, maybe should be another veil, but uh, I really did have fun and uh, I wish I would have been able to squeeze out a fiver, but otherwise I think this list is gas and you should try it out. Don't worry, we can solve bow mouses. We really can and I'll show you. <laughs> Alright, hope to see you for another video. Bye!